It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bone, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, Badass Slingshots, and Mossy Oak. I shoot PSE because I like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of deal and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. I shoot PSE. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families of field. Welcome back to another mini cast. And Dan, you know, we always ask our special guests a couple really important questions for our listeners. And we've got Pat Durkin on the line still. And I'm going to let you find okay, away here. For the first question we always ask, uh, one of them is You're a hunter, you've been hunting for several years. What's your favorite recipe? I'm sorry, my favorite what? Recipe. Recipe. Yes. Um, my wife. I, I'm not I'm not a great cook myself, but I I, I do have um, my favorite recipe is my wife makes um, she'll take a roast like from a, from a deer or an elk, and she uses this Catalina sauce, and she'll cook that roast until it's basically real tender, but it, it's marinating in this um, Catalina sauce while it's cooking, and that is probably my favorite way to make um, to, to eat venison. Do you have a preference um, if it's elk or if it's deer? Um. I think elk is a little bit better um, as far as the overall taste and, and whatever. But I, 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 like, I like wild meat. You know, the, the, the venison, it, I butcher that stuff myself. I, I cut up, you know, bone out the, the deer and the, I bone out the elk. And I don't ever put a bone saw through the, any, the, any part of the animal. And I just find that with deer especially, it seems to be touchy about when you start spreading bone marrow across the meat. By cutting through it with a saw, it, it can get that kind of calorie taste. And so I just find by, by using a Rapala fillet knife and just carving it off the bone, that that's the best way to get meat. So basically, you just use your Rapala to fillet the deer. Yeah. I, 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 carry, I carry two Rapala fillet knives in my truck during the hunting season. And I have a, I, typically when I, when I pull out, I have a little sharpening kit, and those, those two knives, and I, and I cooler this for the meat. And so if I get a deer and, and I have time in camp, I just cut it up while I'm in camp. And so when I get back to the house, all I got to do is put it through the, um, we have a little um, vacuum seal. Um, uh, okay. A man after my own heart. I do the exact same thing. I, I, I take it right off the bone and, and you know, cut it into portions and, and vacuum seal it the same way. But I've never, I've never heard of somebody mentioning once they cut into the bone. I don't have a meat saw, so I, didn't, I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, that's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I, I learned that. I uh, uh, can't remember quite where I learned it, but I learned it back in the. Um, well, it had to be in the '80s because I remember working with um, a local butcher, and he he always claimed that he liked to, he he always advertised that he did his just by boning it out, and just by coincidence, I was always boning up out, out deer by that point, and so when he explained how that that the deer has a certain kind of. Um, uh, in the marrow, whatever, I, I don't know. I think I know nothing about this uh, stuff as far as specifics. But I do know that that marrow being spread across, 
you know, the meat gives it that calorie taste. And I was in because I've eaten it, and I've, I've noticed that with some pieces of, of meat that uh, when, when friends of mine have, have had their um, deer cut up. And so I know it's an efficient way to cut up a deer, but I just don't, I, I can tell a difference when it's been run through a meat saw. Really? Very interesting. Yeah. Wow. There's that, news that you can use. How, how can we taste test that? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds well, like we don't want to. Much, much, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that okay. So okay, so that that's your 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 deer elk roast favorite. Do you have a favorite for wild turkey and how you prepare um, it? You, you know, I, I'm spoiled. My wife is an excellent cook. Okay, how does your uh, wife prepare so, it? <laughs> she, she um she's made wild turkey just like she makes a regular turkey i mean and she might put more of the um I mean, she'll she'll stuff them with the typical stuffing but i think she'll do some some of the berries at times too but you know another thing she's done is she's taken them and taken just the breast meat out and smoked that and another thing that's really cool a friend of mine does this he'll take and he's he'll take and save the turkey legs you know those those um well, what, what, what have they got? They had a lot of cartilage in, the, in those turkey legs. Yep. You know, they're, they're almost impossible to eat. But what he does, he takes those turkey legs and he just saves them up until he gets like a half a dozen to eight or eight of them, where his friends will give him their, their turkey legs. And he puts them in a crock pot and basically just cooks them and cooks them and cooks them until all, all that meat just falls off of them. And he, just, and he just picks through it, and if the cartilage falls off of it, he just goes through and sorts, you know, cleans it all out of there. So all that he's left with at the end is basically a pulled turkey um, barbecue, and he'll just, you know put the barbecue sauce in there, mix it with that all that nice meat that's come off of the turkey bones, and then throw the bones away and throw the cartilage away, and then all you're left with is that uh, that, that that pulled meat. And I've you know I've eaten his sandwiches he makes, and I think God, that's an excellent way to eat turkey. Very interesting. Makes me hungry. <laughs> well, speaking of food, you've traveled. And it's healthy. And it's well, yeah. Healthy, the, you know? It's great, yeah. It's not full of chemicals. It's not full of uh, antibiotics and all that kind of good stuff. You know, go out right. to the nature's grocery store. But uh, huh. but you travel a lot across the nation, hunting back and forth. When you're on the road, what's your go-to snack in the car or in the truck? Um, my main snack in the car has become a banana or an apple. I really, I, I, I just don't, I really try not to buy, or I'll eat pretzels once in a while, but I really okay. don't eat potato chips anymore. I just, anything that's fried, I, I pretty much try to avoid because I just feel better when, when I'm not eating um, stuff that's greasy. Stuff that'll lay on you heavy. I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So, so to me, like today, when I was driving home from northern Wisconsin, I was up, up fishing and attending a conference. On the way back, I, I stopped and and in Wisconsin, I'm not sure you guys have them in, in uh, Michigan, but we have these uh, quick trip uh, convenience stores that always sell cheap bananas like 39 cents a pound. And typically, if I'm driving around Wisconsin, that's where I stop and pick up with a couple of bananas because they're so cheap. And I'll just, you know, eat them. Because, the, you know, the thing is that um, the one thing I learned when I, when I lost weight a few years ago was that typically when you're eating, it's not because you're hungry, it's because you're bored. And you got you gotta have something to do. So like if I if I'm driving along and feeling this craving to eat, I'll stop and get some things like like um, carrot pieces or apples or bananas, something that I know that I can just kind of you know work away at, and and satisfy that urge. Because I, I know usually I'm not that hungry though. Right on. Okay. Well, while you're in the car and you're driving, maybe you're not eating, but what's on the radio? What kind of music do you like? I, I don't listen to a whole lot of music in the in the car anymore. I, I listen to audio books. Okay. I listen to podcasts. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of audio books. Like you know, these days, I, I, uh, you, you guys will enjoy this one. You had, you had Greg Miller on. I was actually on my way down to um, hunt deer that weekend. It was opening. It was when I listened to it, it was opening weekend of Wisconsin's gun season, and so on the way down there, I started listening to your podcast with Greg. And then while I'm dragging this, I, I had moved, moved a tripod stand that day, so I had my little earbuds in, and I had my um, iPod shuffle, one of the little iPods in my pocket, and I was dragging this tripod across a, um, a cut cornfield while listening to you and, you and Greg tell stories about Danny. So. <laughs> there you go, see? <laughs> I'm glad we could amuse you while you were, you were busy working yeah. dragging that, that tripod stand. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, because... <laughs> I, 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 I get a kick out of it, how, um, 
called mobile, we made our entertainment. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't have things like, you know, your buds. We had these big Mickey Mouse ears you'd put on once in a while to yeah. listen to stuff and like like music. But our only choice, you know, for for most of the, most of my life has been music in the car. Okay. And I used to listen to a lot of. I, I still listen to some music, but I, it's all now these days. All my music is all on my iPhone, and uh, I have a lot of podcasts on on my iPhone too. Like I, I listen to. Um, the two main hunting podcasts I listen to these days is um, I have like Steve and I love to listen to all the time and, and Randy Newberg's. And I, I like these formats you guys are coming up with. You know, different people who do a, a good, what I call thinking man's podcast. Where mm-hmm. you, you talk about issues, you talk about things that um, um, you know, basically helping people and helping you know understand different different things and whether it's equipment that that you like or it might be. I, I like I like hearing what other other guys are talking about. That's you know that's uh, what we feel is important. Just is giving good information to people. I mean, or, or at least it, making you think. Like well, we, you said, we we like to make you think, but then we also want to take it on uh, uh, from a serious note and have fun with it. it a little entertainment. Like a little entertainment yeah. because yeah. Uh, you know you're, you're right about listening to certain things, and then after a while you don't want to listen to it anymore. Right. It's just yeah. So we yeah, just you know, yeah yeah if you're not if you're not if you're not learning something, you're not laughing a little bit while you're doing it. I mean, to me, there's nothing nothing more fun than listening to a smart person who's who's out, who's got a good sense of humor, and I I get a kick out of guys that can laugh themselves and realize, hey, we're human. We forget names. We you know forget where we are sometimes. And all those kind of things that make us make us unique. And so I, I think that's one of, one of the cool things about podcasts. It, it's um it's a little different format. You know you know you're not not so worried about irritating an advertiser or whatever it might be it's just you know it's more fun yeah, right on i hear you got that right <laughs> so yeah yeah you still <laughs> but you know like some of the podcasts I, I know the guys have no problem swearing in there and and then i, I was thinking what well, a good curse word at the right right point makes it a, an excellent point too so i, I don't I, I have no problem with that sometimes it, it gets the point across <laughs> we'll just yeah. leave it at that right. yeah yeah uh-huh well, I tell you what, I got one last question, unless you got one, Danny. No, I'm, okay. I'm good. All right, one last question, we'll let you go. Okay. L- looking back, and it can be from your childhood up until maybe this year, what's the one hunt that sticks in your mind the most vivid, and why? Oh, good question. Um, I think it's the, the one that I really remember as a, a, um, a cool experience is my oldest daughter, um, from the time she was just about three years old, she, she was hunting with me. And I remember one time when she was about maybe 14, 15 years old, we were out hunting um, and, and Tom, with Tom Underbow for turkeys. And Leah was, it was, her, it was her turkey season to hunt, so we were, you know, I, was, I was just out there with her and Tom, and it got down the final day of the season, and Tom took us to a spot that he thought would be pretty good, and we got in this. He made a really good blind, you know, blended blended us in really well with uh, some background brush, and right we could basically get right underneath this this one uh, bush. And while well, Tom Turkey comes in, quiet, just comes walking in, didn't gobble, didn't do anything else, and it's just there. And Leah lines up her shotgun, and she flinched and she missed it. And I, and I looked around and then took off, and I thought, oh gosh, you know, you. You hunt all all four or five days like this, and now it's gone. Thought we blew it, and, and um, well, Tom just said, let's, "Let's let's keep hunting. We'll stay here and we'll stick stick with it." Well, later in the morning, two big gobblers come in, side by side, strutting, and they're just gobbling. It's just a classic turkey hunting setup. And I remember when she she was up and she was waiting to waiting to shoot, and I and I'm I'm um I'm looking at. The, what I thought was the bigger of the two, kind of picking up when I shoot, and then she shoots, and the one I'm looking at just kind of stands there, looks around, at, and the first thought was, "Oh God, she missed again." <laughs> and then, but no, I look over and here's this big gobbler flopping around, flopping around, and she got him, you know. <laughs> and the the feeling you, you have from you know this super, just you know, you ride the that roller coaster, you know, where you're you're so bummed, for, you know, momentarily. And then next second you realize where you're looking at the wrong bird, and she just killed this really beautiful big gobbler, and big, big, you know, um, great hooks on that lower leg, just you know, 
you know, it's actually mounted now in our house up, up in one story above where I'm sitting right now. And so th- that's the one that I think if I had to pick one that was really just a super enjoyable moment, and that was it. Yeah, it's, it's amazing how our kids can, uh, you know, when we take them home, we have our own emotions and things that we go through when we hunt. But when it's our kids, yeah. it, it does. I mean, it's really special when, when you see them oh, have yeah. a success. That's awesome. Yeah, oh, that's and, cool. and, and you realize, too, there's, you know, I'm, I, I can only imagine the pressure she felt after missing the first shot, you know. <laughs> and because, you know, kids are always, kids always want to do well and make their parents proud of them. There's just mm-hmm. so much pressure on these, on these kids. And, and you, you try not to put pressure on them, but they put, you know, they're human. They put pressure on themselves. Right. So I can only imagine what she was going, what was going through her head when she, um, you know, squeezed that shot off, you know. But she, she did it, and she, she made it work. That's awesome. That's, that's some. That's a cool story. That that is that that's that's that awesome. Well, I tell you what, you got anything else, Dan? Nope. All right. Well, Pat, we thank you for uh, taking a little bit of time uh, from the evening here and sitting down and talking with us, sharing a few Great. things thank with you. us. That'll do it for this mini cast. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows. Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, Badass Slingshots, and Mossy Oak. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe. Until next week on the Up North Journal.